My name is Sukrit Ranjan. And Sukrit, are we alone in the universe? Uh, that's a good question, and I don't know yet. I think the nice thing ab about our time is that in 40 years, we probably will have an idea, an answer to that question. And when I asked the question, are we alone, what did you understand by the word we? By we, I understood humanity. That is to say, like, you know, what seems to be a, what seems to be what we call a sentient species on Earth. If I gave you a hundred billion dollars with the caveat you have to spend this money to help answer the question, are we alone, how would you spend it? Uh, this is a good question and it depends on time skills to some degree. Uh, I think I would have to do a lot more close study of what the relevant technologies are. If, if it turns out that it's realistically possible to build an instrument that can go out and, uh, you know, uh, something like the terrestrial planet finder, that to build an instrument that can go out and search a bunch of nearby stars for potential evidence of life. That might be a good use of part of the money, say $30 billion or $40 billion. But I would argue that the rest of the money is best invested in developing human capital globally from the point of view that uh, if you give a few people a lot of money, they're kind of saturated in what they can do with it. There's only so much money you can throw at a problem. Whereas if you enable a bunch of people to liberate their human capital and to use that intelligence for a variety of purposes, then there's potentially much greater growth that's possible. So you'd invest in primary education all over the world? I would probably tend to do that. Primary education, primary nutrition, obvious public health things like uh, getting rid of um, parasites that infest people that is a relatively cost-effective solution. And I would argue, for me, like a lot of these questions like how does life starve, the search for life on other worlds, I highly suspect it's going to end up being more like building a cathedral than the moon race in the sense that I doubt that I doubt that even if you throw a bunch of money at it, you can do it in a decade. There's just too many, people need a certain amount of time to think and cogitate and do things over. So I think that improve, like you want to invest a small amount, a small but steady amount of money uh, over time and yeah. eventually we'll solve this problem. If there's life everywhere, do you, do you have any idea of what fraction of it would, we would be able to describe as human-like intelligent? Or for example, I think, did you say that you think that we're not alone in the universe? Or I guess you said we don't know. My personal bias is to think that we're not alone in the universe. Okay, so let's work with that uh, mm -hmm. hypothesis. Now, in that situation, if that's the case, what fraction of these other life forms will, would have a human-like intelligence, do you think? Tech, could build tech uh, cameras and radio telescopes. Huh. You know, I have no idea. I think, I think we had to, I, I don't know to what degree SETI, SETI has constrained this by looking for Earth-like, human-like technological civilizations. But I don't know how much constraining power their civilization, their observations have. For example, like I believe terrestrial radio emissions have been dropping steadily over time as we shift more and more of our communications traffic from things that buy up, like radio waves that bounce off of the ionosphere to like undersea cable and, and things like that. So maybe like the radio loud phase is just a very narrow period of a species' existence. Now, when I asked you about your, some of your favorite aliens, you didn't mention Star Trek or District Nine. Deep Space Nine, yeah. Deep Space Nine, okay. Yeah. Deep Space Nine. But you like the aliens there, or you've been inspired by them? I would argue that uh, what inspires me from those series in particular is the, the spirit of kind of exploration they, they have, of like going out and discovering new things. And I think that's less a reflection on my views in aliens in general, and more a, ref a reflection of my personal biases in general, that I think discovering new things is interesting, and finding new people who think new ways is very interesting, and I like learning from them. And that's what they tend to do in that show a lot. So that's a, a personally a, motiv a motivation for me, but... Uh, I don't, I don't, I hope it doesn't significantly influence my approach to science.